Hello guys, I hope you're all doing well today. Coming at you with the next excerpt of my first novel, Black and White Odyssey of Eden, in a series. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. The downpour of particles continued as his calf muscles were becoming exposed, the pain growing ever, ever more excruciating with every passing moment. He propped the glass-like oval into a, uh, the dirt and took the other cylinder back into his right hand, re-engaging it. The column of light cragged through the sky in rough, unpredictable patterns. It appeared solid, as if it had mass, but remained stationary as an extrusion of the cylinder, once more extending 15 feet into the air. It looked as if it were holding a bolt of lightning, as if he were holding a bolt of lightning. Kneeling behind the oval, he delicately spun the back of the cylinder with his thumb and index finger, causing the column of light to expand to a cone. It retained its solid appearance, completely white and opaque. It remained for no more than a moment, then shut off. The air through which it had traveled turned bright blue, then became opaque itself. A buzzing sound saturated its mass as it rapidly returned to its original translucent, colorless form. He knew this would buy him no more than a few seconds. He picked up the glass-like oval and stored it away. With both cylinders in hand, he sprinted as fast as his legs would carry him, giving no credence to his newly mangled right calf. The bone had fractured, but he felt nothing. Adrenaline pumping through his veins, and passion through his heart. He was a mere three feet from the opening, and could feel the breeze of the ship's atmosphere flowing on his face. As the ship hovered at eye level above the ground, he reached out, barely having enough strength to lift his arm, but it was forced to the ground in the, in the machine's final taunt. The dust had once more started to flow. His time was up. The pain started again, piercing, coursing over every surface of his body, slowly eating away his clothing, his skin, his bone, his muscle, indiscriminately. He reached for the cylinder containing the RAA, which itself was beginning to be eaten away, and pushed the invisible button upon it, nearly dropping it to the ground as he fumbled, his fingers faltering in distress. The cracked oval once more appeared. With no energy left, he placed it over his head, grasping it with both hands. A column of superheated air appeared over him, producing the boom sound or booming sound as before. The edifice crumbled a little more, though the crack upon the oval grew in reciprocation. The particles were beginning to eat it away as well. His eyes again darted to the cylinder on his belt. Not yet. Propping the oval upon his shoulders, he grasped the third cylinder containing the EMO, energy mass oscillator. He stared at the sky in defeat. He would never succeed, he thought. This was his hell. To repeat the same sequence over and over for eternity, because he could not let go. He could not let them die. His entire life was akin to attempting to conceptualize the number zero over and over. There was any, never any frame of reference, no previously tread ground, for what the scientist was doing. He was shooting in the dark, and no one knew, leading a doomed civilization into a great unknown. No one knew. He had no idea what he was doing. No one knew his doubt. His hell was never holding hope in himself, but never giving up on humanity. He was alone, dreadfully alone. He could not find a way to stop this, but would never stop trying. And while no one knew his personal doubt, additionally, he would never let them know. The last dying ember of the light that he had grown to represent was all that was left. 
As tears continued to pour from his eyes, he fell to his knees, barely able to continue, holding his paltry shield over his head. And that's where I'm going to leave this section. So, come at you with the next one later. Love y'all. Peace.